the government sits in cabinet and says these are our priority projects, but the people in the different areas determine, yes, that's your project, but this is where it shall be done. In fact, when now you go to the exact allocation of money, and uh, I'll, I'll, I'll look at, for instance, you, uh, uh, last financial year, Isiolo got 15,000 shillings, 15,600 per person, Trukana got 9,300 per person, and Kiambu got 3,000 shillings, 3,300 shillings per person. So this was meant to cure the inequalities, that the, 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 the unequal society that was there over some time. When you put medical equipment in Garis Hospital, and you put medical equipment in Kiambu Hospital. There is a higher population in Kiambu Hospital, but a bigger landmass in Garissa Hospital. So a person accessing hospital in Garissa will take longer than a person accessing hospital in Garissa, in Kiambu. But in Kiambu, there are more people trying to access the same machine than in Garissa. So those inequalities can only be solved by national projects that are of a certain nature. And that is why, and I, I, I'm glad Mweshmiwa mentioned it, even if you remove the national narrative and you go to the county narrative. For instance, in Embo, the Mbere and the Embo have to constantly negotiate, even in the last election, mm. where the senator will come mm. from and where the governor will come from right. because of the Mbere and the Embo thing. And if you go further, you get now the subclans. So basically, this national narrative was a deliberate decision we made, not only in 1963, but also in 2010, by voting a unitary state. Yeah, but we, the, the voting a unitary state is not a national narrative. You know, the fact is, um, over the period, in fact, the reason people speak of state capture, you know, um, uh, it's, I mean, much more is true, I mean, it's, it's correct that um, whoever controls um, mm -hmm. the machinery of state is able to give his regions uh, certain uh, advantages, you know. Um, but we've got to understand that it's not the, f the case that the state therefore favors certain people. It's still exploiting them, even those guys. If you go to Central, there's much, uh, lots of poverty mm -hmm. that's happening, you know. The state essentially extracts from everybody. What it does is some are extracted from less than others. And that's what we fight for because we are blind. We are blinded from seeing that the fact of state capture is not state capture by tribes. It is state capture by elites. And these elites use tribe to hide behind. They rally behind tribes when they are in trouble okay. to say that it's not my problem, it's everybody else's problem. All right. So, Patrick, yeah. what's the role of the state in terms of creating this national well, narrative? The, na the, the, the nation itself in Kenya, the yeah. nation is a creature of the state. We've yeah. got to understand that. Yeah. We got the state before we mm. got the nation. Mm -hmm. We did not create, did not come from us. You know, and we did not reform it after we got that state. You know, after we, we so got independence. So successive administrations now, have come the, after what the is saying yeah. is that we had an opportunity um, after independence. Uh, we had another one um, uh, uh, in the multi in the multi party, multi -party era yes. um, uh, when Kibaki was elected, and now with the new constitution, I think he should also add when Moi uh, 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 took power. Mm -hmm. That we had an opportunity to actually start building the nation actually creating it. But what happened is the guys who got power in 63 found that, well, the, you know, yeah, it was nice. And what they decided to do was to become the colonials. They essentially simply displaced the British and took okay. their place and, and for maintained you, that has the happened system. With successive administrations. It has not been reformed right. fundamentally. Let's it have Dennis respond I mean, to that. I mean, in fact, not just yeah. me. The TJRC report you know, says that the colonial state, yes, yeah. the colonial state is still with us. You know, look at the Ransi report when he discusses the, uh, discusses the police. You know, it says the police from colonial days are still the same guys we are dealing with. All right, okay, you know, A citizen containment squad, it calls them. All right, let's hear from Dennis, because he's talking about successive administrations, uh, the one which you currently work for also, uh, apparently not helping to Listen, create this well, national well, narrative and change the situation. In terms of financing devolution, the current president was among the first people to do it because he was a finance minister when we immediately in the first budget that after adopting devolution even though it was postponed to happen after 2012 2013 elections we remember that he was the first one to allocate our whole budget to constituency level and we came up with economic stimulus that did a number of markets which even dmc admits was done to equality levels in the different presenters not only markets or hospitals schools to just generally try and do and that is what the reason why we also brought the quota system in schools so that a person who gets 320 in northeastern and a person who gets 450 in another place are uh, valid to be the same because of access to equipment and access to equal opportunities i am the least person to deny that there has been a, i don't know if it's deliberate but there has been in the, the area of northeastern has been left behind over some time it's very deliberate but but cures and measures have been put. 
so that when electricity is connected, it is not being connected in central and Luonyanza only or in western and coast, it's also being connected in northeastern as mm -hmm. we speak. Mm -hmm. So that when security measures are done, they are applied equally across all those other places. When education comes in, it happens the same. Today as I was preparing for this show, um, I, I read an article written for the star by Captain Wanderi, and this is what he says. Great nations emerge during moments of crisis and unfortunate circumstances. D is not the first person to advocate, to advocate for secession in Kenya. A Somali called Halif did it in 1962. Al-Amin Mazrui, Sharif Nasir did. But the crisis they spurred made Kenya a stronger state. Nationalists will coalesce around a leadership that supports the continuum of a unitary state. So Can't you think we will emerge out of this crisis? Okay. Um, I'd like us to start talking about solutions because we seem to disagree on some of the <laughs> descriptions uh, that came out of that. Um, Isaac, I'll start with you. So we're talking, you're saying essentially, David D is saying what we're you know, afraid to say in public and that things are not good, even in the National Assembly, across the political divide. So where do we go from here? Is it going our separate ways? How do we fix this? I think, uh, you see, if you study the Project Kenya, it, it actually came from uh, imperialist companies that were rather extractive in nature. Yeah. And if you look at the history of the nation state, uh, uh, the British nation state is not through the West, West, West Palian model uh, or treaty. It is really basically a monarchy that then forced people, uh, the, the Welsh, the, the English themselves, the Scottish to come together. Now, uh, then the question would be, then do we ad adapt federalism? And I think Kibaki had a problem when he invited the governors, you know, for his first meeting. And he made sure that he told them that we are a unitary state mm -hmm. because there's always a Confucian federalism. Actually, the devolution we are practicing is some form of federalism, in my opinion. Well, we don't call it that way, but every county has got small states. In fact, they uh, is basically telling counties to unite around the same idea of the constitution. Now, we have been able to reform the state, but we have not been able to reform the nation. And so the question then that we, we need to ask ourselves is, how do we create a nation out of disparate tribes? If you read Wangari Madai's book, Unbowed, she actually clearly says that the Luo are as foreign to the Kikuyus as any other nation. So that, that mistrust has an history, you see. If people do not feel that they can have free and fair elections, if they don't feel that they can have fair chance at eight, if our institutions of managing our elections, because we stopped going to war with machetes, we vote, we fight with the with the with the with the, with the, with the ballot, mm -hmm. such that our elections have become nothing more than just ethnic uh, census. Mm -hmm. That's the truth. You can actually predict. That's why there is the so, tyranny of Naples. So